All right, so one of the things that I want to start dealing with, and we have to start dealing with this now, is the issue of God being my provider. And we're talking about physical finance and sustenance into our families. All right, I'm really concerned about the, about the amount of fear and how quickly we go into fear. All right, if something happens, it's almost like immediately we fall apart. We need to move away from that. And today I'm going to start a foundation of building us up so that we know that God is going to provide for us and our family in Jesus' name. And not only provide for us, but have more than sufficient so that we can be a blessing to somebody else. All right, what is the purpose for you to have excess uh, finance or resources in your hand? So that you can be a blessing. That is the purpose. Remember, at the end of the day, God's not worried about your stuff. The stuff is going to be left behind when you go to heaven. God is worried about souls. And that's where the focus is. God is interested in people. And so sometimes you need the stuff to get to the people. And I'm going to take us through a journey now. Now, I know that this is going to be very controversial. I know that this is going to rock some of our theology and our teaching in the past. But please bear with me and let's take this journey together because I believe that God wants to liberate our thinking. God wants us to line up with the word of God because one of the things that I'm concerned about is this. Jesus Christ has paid this price for us. You know that salvation, the word salvation, includes prosperity in your life. It, in every area, body, soul, spirit, and in your physical needs. God has never wanted us to remain in a place of lack. And so if you find yourself in that place, we need to start turning that thing around. That's why Jesus Christ started by saying, listen, God has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. Why did he say preach the gospel? Why didn't he say feed the poor? Because the gospel carries the power for somebody to change their lives. So today we're going to start a process and a journey of bringing us to a place where I can trust God for provision and an abundance to be a blessing. It does not matter your economic situation. It does not matter which town you live in. It doesn't matter where you are at. If God is for you, nobody can be against you and you will prosper. And I'll give you testimonies and I will tell you how God has done things in the past to help you understand. So let's start today. Today I want to lay the foundation that we need to understand if we're going to do something, we need to see Jesus Christ as our example. And if we know that Jesus Christ is our example, we know what we should be living like. All right, the Bible says that Jesus was our example, and whatever standard he had, we will be on that standard. Okay. The comment that I want to start with today is the following. Jesus Christ was not poor. Jesus Christ was actually very wealthy. And you go, no man, that's not what the Bible says. You know, and, 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 and all excuses. Well, let's go to the Word and let's look at the Word and let's see what the Word says. Because if Jesus was wealthy, then you have a right to be that too. And we are going to go step by step so that we can bring into this thing a faith level because if I know that I must attain something, I can start fighting for that in the name of Jesus. And spiritually, we can fight for our economy and fight for our nation in Jesus' name. All right. So just before I get into this, please, I want to just ask everybody to hit that share button. Let's share this feed right now so that we can get this around so that people can actually follow this. Because I'm going to, I believe that the church of Jesus Christ has been caught up in a lie. We've been caught up in a life for so long, and that's why we don't have the provision. When the emergencies come, we don't have enough to help others. So let's start. In Luke chapter 8, verse 1 to 3, it says this, Now it came to pass afterwards that he went through every city and village, preaching and bringing glad tidings of the kingdom of God, and the twelve were with him. Now, when it says that he went through all villages, he didn't go through all of the villages in Israel. He was working around the Sea of Galilee. All right. He was literally going to all the villages around the Sea of Galilee at this time. And a certain woman 
And certain women who had been healed of evil spirits and infirmities, and her name was called Mary Magdalene, out of whom had come seven demons. So in other words, he had laid hands on her, cast out these demons, and she had got healed. Infirmities mean sickness. So these demons were calling, causing sickness in her physical body. And so as he prayed for her, got rid of the, the demons, got her healed, and she started to follow him. Now, and so she was there, and with her was a lady by the name of Joanna. Okay, she was the wife of uh, Chusa, and that was Herod Stuart, and Susanna and many others who provided for him and their uh, and their sustenance. In other words, and the twelve. So I want you to see something. First of all, you got Mary Magdalene, you got this lady Johanna, and many other women that were providing financially for Jesus and his entire party. Now I want you to look at this thing. Let's go and evaluate this properly. Firstly, who was Mary Magdalene? It's really important that we understand this because then you understand how the gospel is supposed to operate. Mary came from a town called uh, Magdala. Magdala, I'm not sure how to pronounce it exactly. Okay, which was a town on the Sea of Galilee. She was a very, very wealthy business lady. Okay, what they did in this town, it was a very wealthy town. This town um, exported fish oil and, and salted fish. So they, they took the fish, dried them out, salted them, and they were part of the export and fish oil. So those are the two main things that they did. So now this is something that you need to understand that when we talk about Mary Magdalene, we are talking about a very, very wealthy lady. And Joanna was married to what we would consider somebody of parliament, of the courts. Okay? Somebody high up, a government official who was very wealthy as well, probably from the same town. And so these people were the ones responsible for taking care of Jesus and the disciples' needs. There was no lack whatsoever in Jesus' situation. Jesus did not have to sit down and go, okay, well, this evening we've got to just create some supper because we need to eat. All right? Or we're running low on something. I need you to understand that Jesus Christ had absolutely no lack. Even when he went and told Peter to get the coin out of the sea, out of the fish's mouth. Jesus was actually teaching uh, Peter a principle there. Because what is Peter's job? It wasn't that God, he needed to go and do this. All right? Um, he didn't need to go and, and create a coin for Peter for, to go pay the taxes. Peter's job was a fisherman. God was teaching Peter principle. Your business can pay Caesar what is needed. What you are busy with can produce enough to pay Caesar what is Caesar's and God what is God's. It can come out of the thing that God has anointed you to do. Okay, and called you to do. Now remember that Peter was called to become fishers of men. That's why later on you'll see Peter and Paul say, listen, we can live off the gospel. Okay, but we'll deal with that on another occasion. Now, when it came to Jesus, there were people supporting him. That is a principle. The, the secularly employed people should be looking after those that are called spiritually. They are there for a reason. They are there to be able to sit down and study the word and give the milk and the principle into the people who are, are busy secularly. Because the guys secularly don't have the time. Come on, how many of you work? How many of you realize that when you work, you don't have time to sit down and spend hours in the Word? But somebody can come in 10 minutes and give you the revelation that you need that can carry you and pull you through. That is how God intended it. But the person giving the revelation needs to have time to separate themselves. They can't have a secular job. And so what happens is we need to make sure that they are taken care of properly. That's the biblical principle which Jesus started. Jesus had people taking care of him so that he could carry on with the spiritual. And you'll find that even in, the, in Acts, and we'll, we can go through that at a later stage. Now, this same Mary Magdalene, who was exceptionally wealthy, was the one that came to Jesus' feet and washed his feet with his oil, this perfume. 
All right, in John chapter 12, verse 5 to 6, it says this. And this is now Judas. Now trust Judas now to get involved here now. Why was this fragrant oil not sold for 300 denarii and given to the poor? In other words, why go and take an expensive oil and go and, and wash Jesus' feet and anoint him with it? This he said, not that he cared for the poor, but because he was a thief and had the money box, and he used to take of it when he needed it. I want you to know that Judas was stealing from Jesus. But here comes the issue. Jesus Christ had a money box. Jesus Christ had a bank account, if you would, where he had finance. People were giving him to the, his, his calling or gifting, and he had finance, and he had a lot of finance. Jesus Christ did not have any lack whatsoever around finance. I'm going to deal with this thing because we need to understand Satan has been trying to steal from us and keep us bondage and thinking that we are supposed to just survive. No, you're not supposed to survive. You're supposed to be in a place where you must be a blessing. That's why Abraham understood this. He says, don't you dare give me finance just so you say you made me wealthy. God's going to make me wealthy. So we're going to help you understand these principles. Now, she came and she spent this money and, and poured it out on Jesus' feet. Why on earth did you use such expensive stuff? Because Jesus then said, listen, this is a symbol of my burial. We are need to get anointed as a thing. It was a prophetic action. She didn't even realize it. Okay? And so now you need to understand that, that Mary comes and she sits down and takes this expensive perfume and comes and pours it out on Jesus' feet and anoints him. Okay? The next story that I want to tell you is the feeding of the 5,000 odd. Let's go to Luke chapter 9, verse 13 to 14. And this is Jesus. And he said to them, you give them something to eat. And they said, well, we only have five loaves and two fish unless we go buy food for all these people. I want to ask you right now, at any given point, do you have enough finance to go and buy meals for the 5,000? And that was only, because the Bible says next verse, there were about 5,000 men. Forgetting about the woman and the children, add that up, maybe 7,000, 8,000 people, we don't know. Let's say 8,000. Do you have enough finance right now to go buy meals for 8,000 people without a problem? The disciples knew they had the finance. They said to Jesus, well, do you want us to go buy food for all these people? They weren't sitting panicking about whether there was finance or not. The issue was, how do you want us to handle this? Because we've got to give these people food. Do you want us to go buy food? Or what do you want? We only have five loaves and two fish. This isn't enough to feed these guys. Then Jesus went into the miracle. Remember, and then he did the miracle again. So I want you to see something. That Jesus Christ had an abundance of finance at any given time. That if he wanted to be a blessing, he could be a blessing at any given point. But he was teaching his principles of faith. He was teaching them how God can work with faith. In fact, Jesus Christ even left Judas with the money bag and he knew he was stealing and he never did anything about it. Why? Because the money wasn't the issue. Jesus wasn't held by money. It didn't grip him and hold his life. And we will deal with that. But you need finance to be able to do what God has called you to do. If Jesus had to go across somewhere and travel somewhere, it cost money. He didn't always have these women all the time with him, finance, financially giving him stuff. I, I think sometimes they gave him to this, into the kitty so that he had the finance to do what he needed. But remember that Jesus Christ is your source. Always the source. And I'm going to teach on this properly, but he uses people. You do not wake up in the morning, like, you know, we often say to the kids, listen, money doesn't grow in trees. You don't wake up and God's created a whole lot of money. He cannot do that because if he did that, he would be going against the law of the nation. he would be creating counterfeit money and he would be messing up with the economy. God cannot do that. So he'll never do that. What God will do was create an opportunity where you can get finance in your hands and you will always use people. 
Okay? The next thing that I want to deal with is his clothing. Do you know that Jesus Christ wore designer clothing? Many people are going, no, that's not true. Well, let's look what the Bible says. Matthew chapter 27, 35, it says this. Then they crucified him and divided up his garments, casting lots that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet. They divided up my garments among them, and my clothes they cast lots. Let me ask you something. If his clothes weren't anything, why would the soldiers even bother with his clothes? Let me give you the answer. John chapter 19, 23 says this. Then the soldiers, when they had crucified Jesus, took his garments and made four parts to each soldier a part and also a tunic. Now the tunic was without seam, woven from the top in one piece. That was a very expensive designer outfit. That was something that was one piece that was only designed for the high priest. So I need you to understand something that Jesus had no problem with wealth, with finance, with an abundance. And he's asking us as believers to change our mindset from a poverty mentality. Why? Because as long as you are poor, you are not going to help anybody else. I'm not saying be extravagant and have 20 cars. I will deal. There are people that God's going to call to have 20 cars. I will deal with that in days to come. But today I want us to break this mindset. And we actually need to repent of a spirit of poverty. We need to repent that Jesus Christ paid the price so that we could be prosperous and be in abundance and yet we settle for nothing. It's not God's plan. God never ever intended us to lack. We are settling for second best. And it's time that we start changing that. Listen to me. We need to start changing this. This mindset needs to break off the church. This mindset needs to come off the believers. Why? Because if we are going to make a difference, let's use a simple thing. The Bible says the goodness of the Lord leads to repentance, right? The Bible also says that when I was poor, you, you came and gave me food and you clothed me. When I was prison, you visited me. Remember that story. How can I go and feed the poor if I don't have finance? Come on. If I don't have the means to be able to go and do something. Why is it that we always sit down and go, well, let's just make our needs just get through. Listen, as long as I can just pay my bill month to month, that's never been God's intention. God has instructed us to go and feed the poor. How can you go feed the poor if you've just got enough to sort out your family? So as we go through this, I'm going to start showing you God's plan for us having finance and lacking nothing. And being prosperous so that we can be a blessing. And so we need to start correcting some of these things. We need to start correcting our mindset even towards the clergy. This thing of God, we're going to keep them poor. You keep them humble. is absolutely ungodly. I understand. I've been in that situation. I know how people think. You know, if... if if the minister just gets a new car, yes, it's a disgrace. You know, how dare, where does this come from? All the church's money and all these stories that are going on. It's not God. So we're going to break this mindset today in Jesus' name. And so we're going to pray right now. We're going to take communion together. And as we take communion, I want us to repent of a spirit of poverty, a spirit of lack. If you have settled Oh, ach, no, well, we'll just come through. Oh, we'll, it's okay. You know, the devil's stealing from you and you're sitting down and going, it's fine. It's not fine. You, if you are not in a place where you can be a blessing to somebody else, you need to start trusting God to get there. You need to start trusting God and say, God, you know that when we call and we say, listen, here is a need. We need this thing sorted. There should not be a problem. Do you know that the whole of Israel was so wealthy because they went and took all of the wealth out of Egypt? That's one of the reasons why Pharaoh went after them. 
Because they literally took all the gold and all the silver and walked out with it. What is interesting was they could do nothing with that gold and silver while they were busy in the wilderness. It was worth nothing to them. But when they called for fixing up the tabernacle, the Bible says that they had so much they had to tell the people, whoa, we've got enough, we don't need more. Can you imagine when the church of Jesus Christ calls for a legit need and the body of Christ just come and there's so much, we go, whoa, stop, we've got enough, thank you. You see, we need to change our mindset. We need to go and do what God is calling. There's jobs to be done on this planet and on this continent, and it's going to cost finance. Where does that come from? I'm going to show you how to get there, but it starts with us breaking this lack. The spirit of poverty that's gripping us needs to be broken in the name of Jesus. Okay, so let's get our elements together. The day that Jesus was betrayed, he took bread and broke it and said, this is my body. Take in remembrance of me. This body was broken for our spiritual, our emotional rather, our emotional and physical healing in Jesus' name. And listen, I don't want you to neglect the issue of the unforgiveness and the bitterness and that. We'll pop around that thing. I'm just giving you a little bit of a break because I know that a lot of people have said it's so heavy. I don't want you to let go of that. You keep praying that in Jesus' name and let that, that ministry come into your spirit every day. Release the dunamis over your soul. But he took the, the cup and he said that this is my blood. Do this in remembrance of me. I want you to take this and remember that this was given for your salvation, your provision and your protection. Today we're going to start the provision section. You are going to learn principles and you need to start applying them because God wants to break this lack in our lives in Jesus' name. I will show you how people, even in the trans sky where there is absolutely nothing, how guys have prospered there. I will show you and give you testimonies. doesn't matter where you are. If God's going to bless you, you are going to be blessed in Jesus' name. But we have to get rid of this poverty mentality in Jesus' name. So let's pray. Lord, we come before you in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord, for the power and the price that was paid at the cross. Lord, we ask you right now to forgive us. Lord, first of all, we, we have held people into bondage. We, we have got jealous over people's prosperity. Lord, where somebody prospers and we sit down and we start skinnering about it instead of blessing them and saying, God, I thank you that they've had the faith to do what they need to do. And Lord, I thank you right now in the name of Jesus that they will move and be blessed because you have, they've applied your word. But Lord, in our lives, Father, we ask you to forgive us every time we have judged somebody because they've got something. Lord, I ask you right now that you'll forgive us every single time that we have withheld and stopped and stopped supporting the servants of God who are supposed to be feeding us. Lord, will we have put a poverty mentality on them. Lord, right now, I pray that you would help us repent of any poverty mentality that we've had on our own families and our own lives. Lord, will we say we can't afford it and we've left it there. Lord, I ask you right now that we will repent of this poverty mentality. And Lord, I thank you that you paid the price for our prosperity. Lord, where there is an abundance so that we can be the instrument of blessing. Lord, I thank you right now that as we take communion today, that you'll forgive us of any sin that we've done, any transgression. Lord, we ask you to forgive us of any thought, intent that we've done that is wrong. But God, I pray right now that today the spirit of bondage comes off us, the spirit of poverty and this mindset break in Jesus' name. And Lord, we are sorry that we have minimized the price that you have paid for. And Lord, as we take communion today, I thank you that you are setting us free of this. Lord, I thank you that Jesus was prosperous and he set the example for us. From today, we will have more than sufficient to be able to be a blessing for others. In Jesus' name. Amen. Let's stay together.
Lay your hands if you've got physical ailments. We're going to release the dynamos power of God. Lord, right now in the name of Jesus, we release the power of God over every single person. And Lord, wherever there is any form of sickness, we come against it in Jesus' name. We release the anointing of God and the dunamis power to flow in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Lord, that we are healed. And Lord, that we are totally set free in Jesus' name. Every symptom to leave us in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, that we, uh, we are totally healed and every one of us, Lord, will walk in divine health in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to pray over our nation. But folks, I want to just warn us. When you get negative reports and stuff comes, you need to reject that in the name of Jesus. Do not go into fear. All right? Do not go into fear. Do not allow that thing to grip you. And so as we pray, I want you to start praying and releasing the power of God over our nation in Jesus' name. Lord, I thank you in Jesus' name. We lift up our nation. We lift up our president. Father, I thank you for protection over him and around him. I bind every single assignment, every word, concentration, thought that is trying to go against him. Lord, I thank you that every plan will come to null and void in Jesus' name. We release and speak life over our nation in the name of Jesus. We release wisdom in Jesus' name. We bind every demonic spirit that wants to influence our leaders. We restrict a spirit of divination. Lord, anything that has come from the occult, anything that's come from Satan, we bind its works right now and its influence over our nation in Jesus' name. We thank you, Lord, for a supernatural intervention. We release the power of God over our nation. And Lord, we thank you that we will see the blessing and we will see the power made manifest in Jesus' name. We thank you for our economy that will turn and be blessed and be strong. We thank you, Lord, that we will be the breadbasket of Africa. We will do what we need to do and we will have the resources to do what we need to do in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you for our business people. Lord, we thank you that as they go back to work, Lord, that they will be creative. The power of God will be made manifest in their lives. And Lord, I thank you right now that we will see the blessing of the Lord be made manifest across this nation. Lord, I thank you that as we start getting into your word, Lord, that we will not settle and we will start pushing in for the blessing of God over each family in Jesus' name. We come against lack. We come against this issue of just being content of where we are at. Lord, we pray for every single person in our cities, in our towns. We pray a protection over them. Lord, we thank you that they will not get this virus in Jesus' name. And those who have, we release the dunamis power of God for a supernatural intervention and a supernatural healing. Father, we thank you right now for the essential services and those that are at work. Father, we thank you for their protection and blessing. Lord, we pray right now that each and every person will adhere to the rules and do what they are meant to do in the name of Jesus. Lord, we release your word and prosperity over our nation. We thank you, Lord, as we release scriptures. Angels are at work, busy fulfilling what they need to do in the mighty name of Jesus. And everybody said, Amen. Amen.